So, Ryan, mm -hmm. I was thinking, shall we spend the evening together tonight and cook together? Mm, I can't tonight. I'm meeting Clara. We go for a drink. Oh, my, come on. Like yesterday you went to play ping pong and the other day with your parents and then you go to the cinema. Well, it's a bit exaggerated. It's not exaggerated, but... just I find it really selfish of you that you just don't care about the relationship. Selfish? What do you want? What's what? your problem? I it's... care a lot about the relationship. Yeah, the only thing we are doing together, Oriane, is sleeping in the same bed. What's going great. On what with a great you? relationship. Yeah, I told you that this week would be busy for me. And what do you yeah, want? There is always what do you something. talk like this to me? I'm yeah. Not, what okay, you don't want me to speak like this? I will not speak. Well, what do you want, Yoram? Like well, I can say... I have something else than my boy? friend in my life? You want, me like, you want me to be like my grandma all the time in the kitchen? I'm saying just that you are never available. Yeah, you see? You, you see, you don't again. listen. You no, you don't listen. Me. You put pressure on me. I'm sorry. I'm not putting pressure. I don't I'm like just... when you talk like this. Oh, yeah. So what is going on between people? You know, even people who love each other, they sometimes hurt each other so much. What is going on? You know, when I was in school, I was taught mathematics and geography and history and many other things that I never used in my life. And nobody was teaching me what I would clearly consider as the most important life skill, which is communication that will serve you in whatever you do in your life. Do you know this phenomena, for example, that people fall in love and then they get married and then they need a lawyer in order to divorce? Like, what's going on between people? Or I read an article that says that the number one reason for people to quit their job is human relationship, is conflict between, you know, with the boss or with their colleagues. Like, what is going on between people? And I'm not even yet speaking about war and politics and stuff like that. Like, what the f is going on between people? So if communication and connection between people is so important, what is the source of conflict? I work as a mediator and in 99% of the cases, when I go down the layers of conflict to see what is the cause, I see one pattern, which is judgments. And when I was introduced to nonviolent communication, I was curious how many of my thoughts are coming in a judgmental language. So I bought myself a little booklet and I put it in my pocket and I went into the world. And each time I had a judgmental thought, you know, like, you are arrogant, she is selfish, I'm stupid, I was just writing it down. After three days, my book was full. But full, I mean in both sides of the paper. So learning nonviolent communication, it became very clear to me that judgments is a tragic description of reality. Or in other words, it's a lie. It's a human invention. It's it's a way to be honest that is not really describing what is really happening in reality. So what do I mean with judgment is a lie? Let's imagine that there is a book here and you read the book and I read the book. And you say, oh, this book is really boring. And I say, no, this book is so interesting. Like what happened? Listen to the language that we speak. You say, the book is boring and I say, the book is interesting. What happened to the book? The book entered into a kind of an existential question. Am I boring? Am I interesting? And I would say the book is not boring and the book is not interesting. The book is just a book. And judgment is a tragic description of a certain experience that we are having. And we are not very skilled to describe this experience. So it's relatively easy when we speak about books and it becomes more complicated when we are speaking about people. So as Marshall Rosenberg say, the founder of nonviolent communication, every judgment is a tragic expression of a beautiful need. Each time somebody is judging you, it's actually, it has nothing to do with you. It's, it's an expression of a need that they have. So what, what is it when I said to Oriane, for example, you are so selfish, you don't care about the relationship. What was my need? What, did, what was the experience in me that I was trying to describe? Well, when I say you are selfish, is it, I just, I love her a lot. It's funny, no, to say selfish, that's a weird way to say I love you. And you can notice that when I say you are selfish, that does not motivate her to spend more time with me. So let's see how Oriane would react if I share my need with her. 
So, Rian, mm-hmm. I realize that I really miss you, actually. Mm-hmm. And I really would love to spend time together. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, would you enjoy maybe tomorrow morning to take some time together? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Definitely. Yeah? Yeah, tomorrow morning works. Cool. <laughs> But it's not always that simple. And what if she would say no? So, Rian, mm-hmm. so I was thinking, shall we take time tomorrow morning then? No, morning is really, really bad timing for me. So when Oriane is saying no, it just means that there is another need that is wanting to be included. So let's guess what this need could be. You want to make sure that you take care of your running. Yeah, definitely. Running or yoga. Morning for me is really the, the best moment for my physical balance. Yeah. You really want to take care of your balance. Definitely. You know how I am when I'm not in balance. Mm, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, so she would like to care for her balance. And believe me, when her need for balance is not being met, it's not fun to be with her. So let's continue the dialogue to see how to include this need. Yeah, so, yeah, you really want to take care of your balance. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah. do you have maybe an idea of when will be a fun time for you that we can mm. spend together? Well, actually, uh, tomorrow evening I'm available and, yeah, I would like to, to cook with you. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yay. <laughs> so this super simple principle of moving the dialogue first to meeting on the level of needs and only then come with creativity as to how to care for everyone's needs can be used on all levels. It can be used with couples, it can be used at work. And also it can be used in politics. Watch this video, how I was supporting a green organization to be in a negotiation with a Chinese minister. For example, I was working with like a, a group of a green organization and they, they, they were in negotiation with a Chinese minister to stop fishing tuna fish because in two years there will be no more tuna fish in the ocean. So they made research during one year, they spent a lot of money to, to collect all the information of how to convince the Chinese, Chinese minister to stop, <laughs> to stop uh, fishing tuna fish. And they came to the Chinese minister and during two hours they gave him a lecture about how wrong it is to continue fishing tuna fish. And in the end they told him, so dear Chinese minister, you should stop fishing tuna fish. And guess what the Chinese minister said? No, I don't want. No way. My guess also, he was not even listening to them during two hours. It's more than what a minister likes to listen. So I told them, okay, can I try to do this negotiation in nonviolent communication? So I asked one of them to play the Chinese minister. And then I told this Chinese minister, dear Chinese minister, I have this research that is saying that in two years there will be no more tuna fish. So I'm really concerned for the ecological system. Can you please tell me your reasons behind continue fishing tuna fish? And then the Chinese minister said, yes, I have 15 million people working in this industry. And then I said, thank you very much for giving me this information. And I said, well, so dear Chinese minister, I hear that there are 15 million people working in this industry. I really care for them. And I'm really worried that in two years they will have no more jobs. So are you open to negotiate with me to see how we can care for these 15 million people? And all the five, the five green pieces are like, they were like, oh my God. So every judgment is a tragic expression of a beautiful need. So let's do an exercise together to experience it a little bit. So Oriane will show a demonstration and I would invite you to press pause between each step in order to use your own example from your own life. So step one, think of a situation from your life when somebody did or said something that you didn't like. Mm. Well, when Joram said, you're selfish. Step two. Write all your judgmental thoughts about this person and allow yourself to be uncensored. My judgments uncensored. He's always judging me. He's putting his frustration on me all the time, like I'm his garbage. Yeah. 
Step 3. Connect with the need behind each judgment and use the need list that appears at the end of Oriane's demonstration. Yeah, he's always judging me. That's my judgment. And yeah, first of all, it's very painful. Um, yeah, and, and also I realize I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared that we will get more and more distant. And I so want to be seen, you know, that I, I very much care about our relationship. And, you know, I have, I have other needs. And I even need support that, you know, to take care of, all, of this balance between all those needs. Judgments are all over the place. I judge you and I judge myself all day long. If you want to see where is the most violent war zone is in people's head, how they speak with themselves all day long. For example, now, you know, I'm making this video, but all the time I'm thinking, I'm such a bad actor, it's such a crap what I'm doing, I'm really a failure, it's worth nothing. And behind this judgment, every judgment is a tragic expression of a beautiful need. The need is that I so care, I so want to create something that is meaningful to you to watch, something that you can learn from. It's like I'm obsessed with my connection with you. I don't even know you and I'm obsessed with you already. So this was a very short introduction to nonviolent communication. If you want to learn more, have a look at my website. It will appear now.